Well, first, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And let's start because, you know, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm so old school. I call it acro sport, even though it's sports acrobatics. I know. Thank you. That's <laughs> That is what it is because we had it in our gym in Detroit. We had girls artistic, rhythmic gymnastics, and acro sport, as I called it, right? So tell me how you got to sports acrobatic or how you started. Oh my gosh, it was really Wendy, it was, it was, it was a twist of fate. I was walking through a dance studio with my grandmother. And I was like seven or eight years old on the cusp there. And um, she was taking me to ballet class, actually. And my first coach, Nikolai Miho, who was from Bulgaria and was coaching an opera sport team there um, in San Jose, California, which is still so wild to think about because it was still such a niche thing and kind of like a weird sport at that time. And he came up to my grandmother and he said, I think she would be perfect to do acro. Um, can she take a class? Do you think that she would be interested? And my grandma looked at me and she said, well, it's up to her. <laughs> right. You're going to have to ask her if she, if she wants to do it. And, and I had seen it a little bit while I was while, um, going to my dance classes. I was in jazz. I was in tap. I was in ballet. And so I would see it ever so often. And I thought it was really incredible and really amazing. So I took a class, I think, probably a week from there. And I was, and I was hooked. It was everything. I was in love. It was everything that I was meant to do. And yeah, and I've, I, I, I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> that is so interesting because it was really kind of like a twist of fate or just, you know, happenstance that you got to sports acrobatic, acrobatic sports. I don't know what to call it. Acro. Let's call it acro. <laughs> <laughs> acro, acrobatic gymnastics, sports acro. I mean, it, it has so many incarnations now, but I, I love that you say acro sport or sports acro because that's like, that's in my heart. That's that's the traditional, well, I mean, traditional, yeah, the traditional way of saying it, so. <laughs> that's so interesting. So your first coach was Bulgarian. Yes. So tell me about that uh, because I don't think people understand that mix which is a very interesting mix. So how was it to have an Eastern European coach? Um, it was, it was, it was amazing and it was beautiful. And, you know, it's most of my coaches in Afro, um, have been from Eastern Europe and we're from Eastern Europe. So I'm super comfortable, um, in and around that, you know, lineage in around that culture. And he was a, was a very beautiful, beautiful person. He was a very soft spoken coach. He was very sprighty. Um, and, uh, yeah, he immigrated when he was a bit older to America. So that was also quite interesting. His story, his his background was actually in um, in tumbling too, so he actually didn't have a huge background in acro sports. So he came when he came to America. That's when he started to evolve to start to teach acro. So it was also a really kind of interesting evolution for him too. But I um, had the most beautiful time um, being raised and being coached and being loved by this very enthusiastic person with you know with this thicker accent and you know all these different expressions that he had and you know and it was just it was it was so normal and it's and it's just so normal for me to this day I mean that's family Bulgarian Russian Ukrainian that's family to me and that kind of traditional nuance of coaching and style um, and I have to say too he was um yeah he was just a very like bright happy happy coach <laughs> that's great and it's wonderful it makes a huge difference it really does and it's so nice when I see your smile and you talk about your coach um you know that's important they're so influential in our lives right and it's just so nice and I think people understand it because I had my coaches were from the Ukraine too right so we had the same kind of energy it was the funniest thing you know in Detroit we had these Russian coaches and all these black kids. And it was just like this, a little strange, but I must say, and I don't know if you know this, I think there was a little bit difference, their view on black athletes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, definitely. They, they, <laughs> they thought the world of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was my Ukrainian coaches, my Bulgarian coaches, they were enthralled. They thought we were just, so magical and I have to say too my my Eastern European coaches never made me feel any different 
ever. They trained us just equally. There was, there was, there was no bias. There was nothing like that, but they were my, they were like, you're stronger. You're more beautiful. You're more interesting. Everything. Like my, my old coach, Yuri, he used to say like, I don't think I'm allowed to say this like in America. He's like, but I think that black people are the most amazing, <laughs> the most amazing <laughs> people on the planet. You know, he would say all sorts of things and they, and my coach Nikolai, like it was, it was just always the same. You were just there to be the best that you could be and to mold me. I also competed with my sister, um, which was so beautiful. So it was, it was, it was two black girls. Like, you know, there were, you could count the black acrobats on your hand, basically when we competed in acro sport, that's how few of us there were. Like literally, I couldn't say there were more like 10 throughout the entire country, maybe 15, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to, you know, be generous, but he and the rest of my Eastern European coaches just, <laughs> we had such an impact on them. And I have to say that I felt in their care with them outside of everything else, um, that influence of bias or anything like that, but that influence of feeling like I was incredibly gifted came the strongest from my Eastern European coaches. That is so interesting. And I see that, I get that. I think it's because, you know, they came from a different background where they didn't come, they weren't around a lot of or any <laughs> black athletes or anything like that at all until they got to to america so it's interesting and i got that same sense that they were just they just wanted to do the work that just wanted to make good gymnastics it didn't matter you know what i'm saying that's yeah. very interesting that is interesting mm -hmm. so tell me about for one you're like multi-time national champion in mm -hmm. All the stuff, right? I don't know how many times, 10, 12, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> with my sister, before my sister, with my partners. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. So tell me how it was once you started traveling internationally. How is that impacting you as a gymnast and as a young girl and as a black woman? I, you know, I had, I had the most amazing experiences, um, competing internationally. And, um, you know, I think, I think, again, it was a really wild experience, um, being black and going to Russia, um, you know, in the early 2000s and going to Ukraine and being all over, you know, white, the wider Europe, um, and having those experiences, I have to say, because I, I think I was so loved and protected in so many ways, I felt very good, but, you know, we had experiences that sometimes were a bit odd and um, my coaches had to come in and kind of deflect from some situations not that they were bad but that they were odd you know people being very curious about us like what you were saying I was in a lot of villages you know at training camps and the villages had only seen black people on on tv I mean when it was unfathomable that now a black child or a black acrobat would be in their gym in their presence in their town in their village and so we had a lot of experiences like that but then the other experiences were about the ability so it was very much like wow like you guys are on a level that we could have never have imagined just for being American you know to be honest because for me I wasn't even just the first black acrobat that was the world champion I was the first American world champion and the first American um coming into those spaces competing at a really high level too so that was also really unique um but I have to say it was I think looking back on it now I always think even more so how radical it was during that time I was you know I wasn't with my parents usually traveled with my coaches and um entrusted into their care and so there was a lot of experiences that I was having also too where there wasn't like that buffer all the time and so you know I I look back on it now I'm like wow my parents <laughs> you know just like having to go and you know and, and be there but there was such camaraderie also to um uh, around Afro sport and um, and around competing and with the other countries and with the other cultures and I'm so grateful to have you know those those friendships and those relationships from you know from countries from all over the world you know um, athletes from France and athletes from Belgium and you know all of like the kind of go to places that we went to when we competed and it was really exceptional um, in my life to grow up with this experience that I am the world and that I'm a very, you know, I'm a global citizen, I'm a global athlete. And you really get to lean into the fact that 
it does come down to what you can do and not only simply what you look like and how you reflect in the world and how beautiful that is to be able to um to encourage that kind of like integrity in the world through your gymnastics ability through your acrobatic skill and and see how people um are inspired by it because people would say how they were inspired all the time and and I know also too looking back now it was not just because of my ability but also because I was a, a black acrobat that's interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a really wonderful way to put it, that, that you're a global citizen and you do look at the world differently. And the world looks at you differently. Now, I say, I, I'm, I'm assuming it happened with you because it definitely happened with me. Well, you were on the top of the US, top, top, top. But for me, sometimes when I went internationally, they really liked my style. Like I was a superstar <laughs> and I would go to Europe. They're like, look at that girl. I mean, I did have, you know, the hottest music and this and that, but it was because it was so novel in a way mm -hmm. that I was able to do better internationally than I did when I was here, which is kind of interesting. We had that too. Definitely had that too, where there were the hangups in America that we did not experience when we were internationally. And I always thought that was also too very wild and actually kind of sad. <laughs> And there were, there were elements of that that never made sense, especially to me and my sister. But to say that too, you know, I always say, um, because you know, all the girls that they're so lovely, they all go viral now with their routines and stuff like in college gymnastics. Me and my sister went viral back in the day before it was a thing to go viral with your routines and with your music and with your choreography and with your like costumes. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Well, I have to say for acrobatics, that's that, that's a very important thing um, that, you know, the I, and I have to ask you this because I think it's so great. And the, the, the um, focus you guys have on form and dance, which is different than artistic, no, nothing against my artistic girl, but y'all can use a little bit of help with some dancing up in here and the choreography part, but it's so integral in acrobatics and the guys have to do the same thing too. So that training is like really interesting. That part, that performance part. Yeah, you know? I love that. And, and I love that it's that it's that it's gaining momentum in gymnastics because when I do see the girls going viral now, I always tell people, you know, that's not that's not typical for artistic gymnastics. That's a new thing for them having all of this character and you know, mm -hmm. creating this this like persona and having music that speaks to that. I'm like, that's very acro sport. And that's what I've always loved about about acro. I always felt like it kind of had everything, like there was nothing really missing. And so it also created a really good platform for me to be able to be a performer and a circus performer afterwards because so many of the circ performers and circus performers that people see came from acro and it's because you have to be incredibly um yeah it's i think it's very multi-dimensional discipline in that way um you get the costumes and things are even flashier now than they were before we even went through like a dip where they wanted it to be less flashy and we were like no like you can't <laughs> You know, now you can have uh, like words in your in your performances and, you know, you can have a whole storyline. So it's continued to build. But that was the theatrical aspect of that really set me up later to be able to be a, the performer that I am now. So I love, love, love that aspect of Acro. No, that's great. And I think people always enjoyed, especially I know when you were touring, you know, you guys were like always the star of the show for when we didn't see it much, but for tours and stuff, right? For performance gymnastics, especially when we were doing like the Olympic tours and things like that, if we had acro, acrobatic athletes with us, you guys were like the hit. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody would stop and watch, you know, because it was, it was so, um, like you said, the performance aspect, but also the athletic, the wow kind of part of it was always so great. And yeah, I wish, you know, it's interesting. I always, cause I did a lot of performing afterwards after my career, but the performance part of gymnastics, we started losing that a little bit. I think is I, I here's the thing. I'm sorry. Cirque du Soleil came up and grabbed it, right? They totally did. Because they took all the gymnasts from around the world and <laughs> it's Cirque du Soleil. Aren't they all gymnasts? Gymnasts and acrobats. Yeah. 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 My coach had to tell them, like, when they used to come and scout us when we were little, they used to come to the competition and he would say, oh, no, 
Oh no, because that's when you could be a minor and you can work for Cirque. So they could come get you and you can do the show at 13, 14, 12, didn't matter. You know, they, they saw that. And a lot of people, I know a lot of acrobats, they, their careers got cut short and they could have, you know, gone further competing, but Cirque came and Cirque came calling, you know, and they, they went for it. But my coaches were like, oh no, they've got, she's got something, she's got more to do. Like, no, you can't have her yet. <laughs> so interesting i didn't know that part that is interesting so talk to me about your performance career because on top of being a world champion and multi multi-time national champion your your career has been at the top as well even the america's got talent you know that competition i gotta ask how was that because you know we all watch it on tv and it's fabulous but that seems so nerve-wracking i'm sorry because it is <laughs> It is in every single way. You know, I, I ended up doing so many got talents after that, but they were they were easier because I was more of a special guest than a competitor. But um, it was nerve wracking. It was the first season of America's Got Talent, which people usually forget about that. It was the first time that people were seeing acro like on a really like broad, like national platform um, instead of just seeing it like in surf where people like don't connect the sports. And so that was actually me and my partner's big thing. We were like, we want people to know more about acro, like not just like, oh, we're circus performers now. We really want them to connect it to the gymnastics world and see like where we all come from. So it was a really it was a really big thing the show at that time wasn't overly defined um so they were also having a lot of troubles trying to figure it out i will have to say that having brandy the singer as a judge was my everything and my life I'm tell I, I I couldn't have been like, you know, growing up with your music, me and my sister, like we were like, oh my God, like Brandy's going to judge you. Like this is incredible. And so I got to meet her, like she got to meet my family. Um but it was hard. Um, there was a lot of politics on the show, you know, a lot of it's made for TV. I like to tell people for that too, especially now, you know, and there's aspects of that too, where, you know, your things are kind of predetermined in a way that you thought like, oh, I thought this was more organic. Oh, it's not. Okay. That's TV. Okay. Well, you learn the hard way and then you never, you never unlearn that. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. That just, it just seems like you're right. It was the first season and to do it on that stage, was it like, was it any, was it all safe? <laughs> No, it wasn't. We would literally spend like 10 or 15 hours backstage and then they would come to you and be like, you're going to be live on TV in 15 minutes. You're doing your entire performance and you're going to sit in the, in the audience after sitting backstage for 10 or 15 hours like doing nothing and just waiting to go. You don't know what's gonna happen. And then now we're gonna move you to the audience. Your name's gonna be called and you're gonna go and like perform live. Like it was, it was, it was one of the most nerve wracking experiences I've ever had. And I had done so much before that, but doing reality TV on that level was, was it, it, it set the tone for me being very particular about what I did in the future. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, okay. After that experience. Yeah, I was very, I was incredibly selective about how I did Got Talents and how I did reality TV show at the, after that, because I felt like they did not take good care. <laughs> and, and, and we were doing such like, you know, dangerous elements, you know, like it was, it was, it was kind of all over. And right before you go on, they're like, what's going to happen if you drop her like on live national TV? And my partner, Arthur, would just be like, oh my God, like, <laughs> Like, I can't believe they're asking me that. They would ask, you know, the craziest questions like right before we went live. So it was, it, it was, it was rough. It was rough. That is interesting. Well, good that you were so successful at it. Thank goodness. Everything yeah. all worked out. So yeah. Texas, yeah, so you did a lot with Cirque. So, you know, they do have a lot of acro athletes, but not a lot of black acro or gymnasts in Cirque. Some, right, from Canada. Um, some, yeah, mostly from Canada. Um, I, you know, even in the, in the midst of all that, I, when I did um, Barakai, I worked with, for, with Cirque uh, quite a long time before I ended up doing Barakai and I did the lead role there. And I was the first African-American woman to do a lead role in a Cirque du Soleil production when I did the lead character in Barakai. And, you know, I mean, that's years after the establishment of that company. And so for mm -hmm. me to still have been like one of the first in and around that like you know still to this day and that was just a couple of years ago so that wasn't that long ago is is quite something so yeah there's still a dearth of black acrobats 
Um, they've got more African acrobats, which is also good. You know, that's adding to the influence um, um, of, 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 of athletes of color acrobats of color but yeah i would say there's still uh there's still a, a a huge like you know downtick in, in in the amount of representation on their stages and in the formulation of how they project characters of color into their shows because the shows have been oftentimes not created for you know women and 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 men that look like us and acrobats that look like us and there was a lot that they uh, had difficulties even adapting me into that role because so many uh, all of the roles mostly are, are created for Eastern Europeans and and um, you know we don't even get the chance to play mythical characters um, in in those roles because they think well would the mythical character have been black I'm like we have, how do we know that the mythical character was white <laughs> like it could have been green blue like we don't know you know so that was um that was that was such a such a such a big deal um, for me when I got the opportunity uh, to perform that role um, in, in Verica because it was, it was so iconic and there's so few roles like that, especially for um, lead hand balancers um, and hand balancers that are women. So, you know, there's a lot of firsts that are established in these environments still that people don't realize because they see a lot of color on the stage, but they don't realize really what's, be, what's underneath that. They don't really know if those are people of color or not. And most of them are actually not, um, you know, paint, painted blue and painted pink and, you know, mm -hmm. painted green and all those things <laughs> is, is not the same as like, you know, full on like eth ethnic representation of, you know, of, of, of actual like culture. So that's interesting. And it's I, I'm so glad to talk to you about this because you just don't think about these things when you see it. Right. You just um, we do a lot. You know, I work with anti-gravity. So, you know, Christopher Harrison, who's my chair. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> interrupt, but one of the best shows I ever saw when I was younger stayed with me. One of my favorite companies ever. Oh, that's so great. I'm going to let him know that it was really it was kind of born out of, you know, a lot of people come to New York, as I did too, to perform and Christopher and Andrew Pacho, they kind of put us all together. And it was the most fun thing to do because and also they started a lot of the aerial work, right? because it's so funny when we first started i was kind of the time to let them rust when they put out the mask everybody flipping and when they had to like catch their breath i'd run out there with my ribbon and my hoop and they're like <laughs> you know, that was kind of the scene but then they realized that they needed to start saving the bodies and started taking it up in the air so all of the aerial work right that's popular otherwise and so many of the gymnasts especially rhythmic gymnasts caught on the aerials quite well right, with the flexibility mm -hmm. and things like that, but it's the upper body, but what you're doing is a whole nother, whole nother level, right, <laughs> the hand balance, that kind of work, so let me ask you something, what is, what is an ideal, I go through, through and that's the other thing I like about acrobatics, is that especially when you do trios or whatever, you have all these different body types that also move the same way, now let me tell you that, that is a trick, when I see that routine, and everybody who's a different size, for one, is tumbling at the same time and moving the same. I, I'm sorry, I just let you know, I appreciate that part of it. And what is a trick to that? Because, you know, it's something, it's a very interesting thing to have all the different, because you have the other stronger ones in the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. But they're moving at the same time. The timing stuff, how did you guys get together? Your, your partner was like way up here and you're there, but the timing of everything, when you had to dance or tumble side by side, these are I I love everything that you said, Wendy. Like you put it just like so perfectly, but that's what's so amazing about acro. It's like the most inclusive sport, really, because like, you know, me and my sister, for example, completely different body types, completely different. People see me and, you know, and, and they think, oh, they think my sister looked the same way. I'm like, no, absolutely not. She was my base. She was much taller than me. I'm so small. I'm actually really small in my family, actually, too. Like my other family, they're not, they're not tiny like me, which is, you know, everyone always thinks is really weird. They expect to see this very tiny family. And then they see, you know, everybody's like, you know, average and, you know, just different builds. But that's what's so great about acro yeah you have you have the bases 
who are usually like the taller the taller ones you have the middle in a trio and they're usually like slightly smaller than the base and then you have the top and the tops are usually tiny or you know sometimes like a bit longer it depends but yeah there is there is that element of these different bodies that are that need that are specific to those roles and what i always find fascinating is that coaches are able to always find exactly what fits like as a trio as a mixed pair which is a boy and a girl which is what I did later on. Two girls, which is also um, a women's pair, which is really fascinating. The men's pairs and how that works. The men's fours, um, which is a whole nother dynamic. But yeah, the symmetry, I mean, that's again, that's coaching. That is tireless amounts of hours in the gym. You know, we would train eight hours a day, getting that down. And it is so difficult to do that and that's you know another element of being an afro that sets you up later on to perform in big shows and in big productions because you're used to making timing you're used to having timing and counts and things with other people like the first time i started performing on stage alone was very strange i i always felt like there was a shadow with me because i i never was i never was alone I was always used to maintaining pace and maintaining speed with my partners, whether it was my my two partners when I was in a trio with my sister, or whether it was when I was in mixed pair and I had male partners and my my male partner, one of them was six five. So six five and then me at five feet, like main like getting that timing, like you're saying, the symmetry within tumbling and stuff, like Oh my God, my coaches, we worked tirelessly on that with like the combinations to try to figure out like what would work, you know, like me bouncing up higher and knowing and understanding like how to hold myself so that I came and landed at the same time as him. And, you know, he was just kind of like a big... <laughs> this flair of a person you know it was it was it's it's really incredible it's really incredible um uh, all the elements that need to come together in acrobatics but those nuances again take you into so many different disciplines of circus and in acrobatics and i always say that acrobatics is the best foundation to being a multi-dimensional um, uh, artist like later on because like you're saying you have all of those influences that you can take into the air that you can keep on the ground um, partnering if that's what you want to stay with um, and yeah and then just like all the other dynamics of being either a static artist or being more of a dynamic artist. Wow, that's so interesting. It's 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 so nice to be able to really talk about it and see it because I'm a fan, right? I'm a fan. I am a fan. I'm totally a fan. But I do appreciate when you get down to the work, like um, a couple of gyms, my son's a gymnast, and they had Aquasport, and I would just like to sit and watch the coaches to see how they did that. You know what I mean? I've got group and rhythmic and we've got that, but it's not the same thing at all. There, like you said, there's so many different elements that you have to put together and the symmetry and stuff. Really exciting. Wow. So you let me can't be too small or too big or anything. Like you, there is there is a place for you in Afro. <laughs> Like, just like what you said again, like, I want to, like, just reiterate that, like, that, again, what's so beautiful about it, there is a place for everyone in, in Afro. <laughs> I love it, and I do, and, I, and it is the most entertaining. You guys can take it, you know, I'm, I'm, me and my rhythmic divas, they don't have nothing about the sport, but that's okay. That's a whole different thing. As you know, they are divas. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, 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 we have, I love rhythmic, know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is so that's funny. It's so good to know. So what are you thinking now? Because so tell me first, what are you doing now? Like I mean, outside of the COVID before pre COVID or whatever. Well, um, pre-COVID, I um, I tour um, or I do resident shows um, as a freelance uh, hand balancer. I go in and out of do collaborations and work with Cirque du Soleil as well. I uh, perform all over the world. Um, I was on my way to work in Dubai um, at a resort um, in a in a resident show before right right before COVID happened, and then I was going to be going to the Maldives after that to work at a resort. Um, so I do such a combination of things. I do commercial work in L as a specialty performer, kind of stunt performer. And um, I do circus tours all over um, the world. Um, I do resident shows, um, theater productions, uh, festivals, TV shows um, throughout the world too. Um, uh, looking for specialty acts and specialty performances, uh, cruise ship work I've done over the years, um, cabarets, dinner theater, um, different types of amusement park work. Um, I was 
working in Saudi Arabia last year at a really amazing kind of um, super duper kind of uh, a, a, a launch of um of a of a of a amusement park type thing um so yeah i usually perform um i have a very dynamic act with a very big prop that's shaped like a stiletto so that's why i go by the name shanae stiletto um <laughs> it's it's really amazing it's like you know it's like two meters high and it rotates on a platform and uh yeah and i introduced that into all sorts of different uh shows variety productions um there's really not like a type of show that I have not done at this point. I've been very fortunate and very lucky um, to be able to be integrated into so many different types of performances. And there's so much circus in the world now too, in a way that there wasn't, you know, even just like 10 years ago. So there's new things that, you know, I've never heard of. And it's like, well, now they're introducing circus into that. And so now there's like a place for me. So, you know, people call and it's like, oh, wow. Now they're, you know, putting circus in the opera. Great. <laughs> right. Oh, good point. That good point. People do want to see people turn upside down and balance upside down. That is true. That's a good point. That's a real, wow. That's wonderful to see, you know, how you've been able to create this amazing career afterwards. And I'm sure, I'm guessing you weren't thinking about that when you were doing gymnastics. You had any idea that you have this possibility to have such a long career? No, wow. you know, a lot of the time it wasn't so defined like it is now. Now there's like a, a total roadmap, you know, a super blueprint for people that are in acro, that are in gymnastics, that are in rhythmic, you know, trampoline and tumbling. Now everybody knows where they can go. But when we were starting, I mean, like Cirque and that, I mean, like that was, that was, you know, that was kind of like the dream there. And then it kind of like stopped there. But just knowing like you have to, I really had to forge my own way and forge my own path as a freelance artist if you wanted to go beyond that and work in other places, work in Europe, work in Asia, work, work in South America. Um, and it was, it was, it was really, um, yeah, I would really say that it was very much a dream. And I wouldn't have imagined going beyond that. I love to, co to compete. I always tell people that like competition was I was so in love with competing. I really was. And I think I even would have competed a little bit longer. Um, but during that time too, there wasn't as much financial backing for us to be able to stay in competition. So I ended up, um, we ended up, you know, retiring and going into shows also too, just like in terms of, you know, it was very expensive competing and very expensive maintaining a career and going all over the place. And so we made those decisions based upon, you know, financials, but I, I had such a, I had such a, such a natural love <laughs> of the competitive world, but I never would have imagined, yeah, no, that I would have ended up um, running away with the circus and performing, you know, in all these different incarnations of my career, because I feel like I've had maybe, I don't know, like 10 incarnations of a circus career, even at this point too. And I really love that there's so much more opportunity now, but I really am proud of the work that I've been able to do in creating myself um, as a performance artist um in the world and making a mark in that way too um with this i think like a second um a second incarnation of my career because so many gymnasts and things and and acrobats and uh that we grew to love and know we didn't get to see them i thought take their incredible talents and acrobatic and gymnastics abilities into more like environments after they were olympic champion after they were world champion like i met a lot of the greats doing um, gymnastics and uh, figure skating spectaculars. And that was kind of the home where you would see them doing shows and doing performances. But I, I got with my coaches, they were like, we want you to harness all of that ability that we've, you know, worked so hard to create for you. Like we want you to be able to use that in another incarnation in your life. And we don't want you to feel like it was just something that you worked really hard for and then you weren't able to um, to transform it into something else. So I'm really grateful for that, that now even at this stage of my life, like I've had all of this, these extra years of using my acrobatic and gymnastics abilities, I, I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for that because I feel like some gymnasts and acrobats were kind of robbed of that because it didn't really exist enough yet for them in the way that it existed for me. And now it exists in these crazy opportunist, 
opportunities for acrobats and gymnasts now. That's a really good point. That's a really good point because yeah, I think people do miss out of the part to be able to have that second career, to use your gymnastics. Like you said, you work so hard and to use it for a little bit more fun and to get paid, it never hurts to get paid. So it's like, <laughs> but you, you bring up a really good point is that, and this is a real thing, which is why I do the foundation. Gymnastics to train costs a boatload of money. It, it just does. I mean, there's yeah. no way around it. Traveling, like you know, costumes are beautiful, but they cost a boatload of money. <laughs> You know, it is. And so what we've been trying to do, and the thing for me was fortunate because I learned from my Russian coaches, but they were in the recreation department. City of Detroit paid for them. So we had this opportunity to get really great training, but it didn't cost a lot. And like what you're saying is, I just want more youth to be able to get the experience because you never know. Like you're just walking around in your dance school and now look what happened. <laughs> You never know. I mean, you never know. And and like what you're saying, um, it is very privatized. And mm -hmm. and 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 that's you know a certain level we've been speaking about, especially this past year, of the elitism of that. And you know, I tell people like my family was middle class, but it took a village. It took a village, and my parents didn't see a lot of my competing because they couldn't afford to go. Mm -hmm. So you know, they missed out on a lot of those things because of finances. But they always figured out a way to make sure that me and my sister could go and we could do it but yeah it is radically um expensive it's only gotten more expensive um as things become more pronounced um and i think that the gap um that is still there is something that needs to be yeah it needs to be um it needs to be closed and you know i've been calling uh, this past year to see more black acrobats on on the level that i was so many years before and everything every single conversation i had i've had with the ones that were most recently in these generations or competing now speak about the financial struggles and about how that's limiting and how that's limited how far people feel like they can go and so i think it's i think it's a very sad thing that's not something that um for example like in russia or ukraine Right. They have a lot of, you know, access to free facilities um, in a way that we don't have in America because everything is, is so privatized um, in America and it's so just about, you know, what your family can do. Um, there are grants and things like that. Like I said, I also had some help from gyms. They, um, they really tried their best. Um, to facilitate some of my training when they could, but most of it again fell on the family and fell on the village to facilitate all of that. So yeah, to get to that caliber, we can't, we, we know that it's not just about lack of ability. And I think that's the most important thing, like what you were saying, Wendy, it's so much more than that. And, I, and, and so much sadder than that, because, you know, missing out on all this brilliant talent just because of money, um, and because of resources. So, you know, even with UC Gymnastics, you know, calling on them to facilitate more financial backing for athletes, for athletes of color, for black athletes, and making sure that they have that cushion and they have that, um, that backing to be able to soar and to be able to be world champion, to be able to compete on those levels, which to remind people, when you get to those levels, it's very political about how you're projected into those spaces to be able to do well. And no matter how great you are, if you're not only able to play those politics by competing, by going all over the world, by showing up when you need to, by going to the training camps, then you don't get to be seen. You don't get judged the same way. So all of those dynamics, you know, play into each other. And then you either are able to be your best self or you're not. And it has nothing to do with what you didn't do, like personally. No, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, thank you so much for bringing it up because that is a reality that people don't understand that part of it. It's just not, it's not so like a straight line. You do this and you do this. There is a lot that goes around, like you said, to be seen. And I think people need to understand this. I don't think they get it. As a gymnast, we understand that we're judged. We get it. I mean, we chose this sport and we know the ups and downs it goes. And tell them, I need you to give a message to the parents because that's my biggest thing. Cause they always go to a meet and they get all upset, right? <laughs> of course, I'm like, you guys, 
I don't even pay attention to this. I like the gymnasts look at the scores, but you all are getting too crazy about this because <laughs> in the end, that's how life is. Like sometimes it's fair and sometimes it is not. Exactly. And and I, and I I I am one of those. And sometimes people say I'm old school for this. This will never go away in me. The competition aspect of that, of being judged, of knowing that you have lost is very important. It's very important to know that, that you need to do better. <laughs> it's a very good thing. Like you said, you don't always win in life and no one's always there giving you the best. You know, I, I, I have scoffed at, you know, the participation, uh, participation um, uh, ribbons because I, 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 I thought that was very important for me to lose. Um, I, I did lose in my career sometimes and, uh, you know, people just had to say, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with this girl? Because <laughs> how are we going to get her onto the next one? Because she's so destroyed. And that was so good. It was character building. I have such a sense of character. It's voracious. And what that set me up for within the rest of my life, because let me just tell you, going to that circus environment and being a professional there is no walk in the park with the way that people treat you. Um, and when more of things than just a score are on the line, it's very, very different. When corporate influences are on the line, money is on the line, people are expecting you to project in a certain way. But knowing that you could be better than what you were yesterday is so important. And you only get that from judging my parents I have to say it's great that they were very low-key and uh but I grew up in the we all grew up in the gyms with you know the parents that just you know could not handle it so I say good but use that energy in the direction of where it should be which is focusing on what do we need to do better how do we need to craft craft things better um and how can we support our child to be able to be to do better in this next incarnation. And also too, in studying, where is the gym not going right? You know, I've also known that in the past where maybe the gym needs a little bit of help understanding how to help their athletes project better into competition. And so that's something that I've seen too, where the parents are very frustrated and it's maybe because they, they, they lack a little bit of the knowledge because there's, you know, like you're saying, there's such an art to that, Wendy. Um, and I've seen that, you know, um, kind of get in the way of athletes that should could have done better, but the gyms need better education in and around the competitive environment and how to help their athletes do better so that the parents aren't all bent out of shape because when I, we know when you're spending all that money, <laughs> you, want, <laughs> you want your child to do well and you want it to reflect on that because you're putting in so much energy. But I, 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 I never got more from anything than I got from being in competition and having my feet held to the fire in terms of getting a good score, in terms of showing up and knowing that the next time it needs to be better. And I also too, I will speak on the fact because we are speaking about being black and what it means to be in that space, dealing with the bias in judging. And I did experience that. I know you know that, Wendy, and I did have that. And that was frust very frustrating years ago. And I come back to my coaches who fought so hard against that when they knew that it was clear bias um, in judging. And so, again, I think that that's a good conversation that people need to continue to keep out there because you know as black acrobats I was judged in different ways and they said things about me competing on the floor that they didn't say about my non-black counterparts at that time so you know I I won't uh, I won't negate um, those influences there but definitely the competitive aspect of of seeing where you stand is so crucial to keeping the integrity of competitive acrobatics and gymnastics. No, that's great. And it's really important. So I, I'm assuming that you were a good athlete as far as going to practice all the time and doing, were you, how were you as a, did you go to practice all the time? Did you like, you know, were you good? I but I'm here for my parents. Like if I was like one minute late, oh, I was inconsolable. <laughs> I was inconsolable. I would, I would, I would, I would troll my whole family. Like if they made me late because I blamed it on the family because it was not me, I would sit by the door waiting and timing them to get me to the gym because I would get in trouble if I was late and there would be consequences, right? We would have to train more. We would get privileges taken away from us. Like uh, 
practice would be much harder. So like I would, I would cry to death, Wendy, if they made me late, if they ruined some element of practice, I guarded practice, I guarded training with my life, I guarded the, you know, everything that came from my coaches or my life, like I would just be there crying, my mom would be like, you don't have to go tomorrow, I'd be like, yes, I do. <laughs> Nikolai is gonna be so, he's waiting for me, you know, I have to go, you know, but you don't feel well, I feel fine, like I, you know, I would just, I was a nightmare for them, I don't even know how my parents handled me, I, <laughs> that is so funny, but so true, but I love it, it's true, it's good, because the, the reality is, when I tell my people, I like gymnastics is not a PC kind of sport, it's not a color, it's not, it's not a color people time kind of thing, <laughs> I like, there's no, <laughs> gymnastics is not what I'm wondering. The meet starts, the training bus leaves, the practice starts at a certain time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's not gonna, that's not gonna flow in this, in this environment. No, yeah. it is not. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things you learn. And it's funny, people ask, how did you do it? I'm like, if you were a gymnast, you were like always early. You're always early before the bus had to leave to go to the training camp. Like when we go on international meets and the bus is leaving at eight o'clock, we would be there at 745 for sure, at least. I ain't waiting on the bus. Uh, yeah, so that, that timing thing, that was a good training too, but <laughs> you're right about the- it's, 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 such a different, it's such a different discipline, yeah. <laughs> It's discipline. And I think I what I, I, I appreciate so much that you're saying how much you wanted to do gymnastics, because sometimes, you know, we get the parents coming in and they they want it so much. But I'm like, if your kid doesn't want to do it, ain't nothing we can do. And they have to do it like you wanted to do it. Like you were like, oh, that's yeah. that's what you have to have. Yeah, that's what you have to have. And I always say, you know, if I, I say I say for parents, see where your child is. Right. There's some children and some older, you know, now that they're older, they say, I'm very grateful that my parents put me in it and they kept me in it, even if I wasn't necessarily as inspired as you are. But the other side of that is is the, is the ones like me. Um, and there's so many of the me's out there that just absolutely were enthralled by gymnastics. I mean, when I watched gymnastics when I was little, you know, before I had even started the sport, it was just a dream. It was everything. And so the love of it, that will carry you through all those really hard, tough times because it is very difficult. It's going to be very, very, very hard. I, I think that's another thing to continue to, you know, articulate with something like this. Like, it's not easy. And um, nothing that you want on that level is easy. Um, and there's going to be a lot of rough days. And um, But your love definitely is the thing that's going to get you through when your parents have to kind of like push you through when you are, are very down and you're having those very difficult days in the gym. But if you are way more zealous than your kid, it's time to take them into something else because the demands of this sport, they will find themselves in a lot of sad territory of getting injured unnecessarily, mm -hmm. um, in losing confidence unnecessarily, getting psychologically damaged unnecessarily. And a lot of that comes from people, especially now, wanting their children to be stars. And for mm -hmm. me, I think it's very much of a sickness where it's become more about that adulation and less about the work. And so I think we need to dial it down a bit with the, you know, social media, with the, you need to go viral in your gymnastics, in your acrobatics, and make it, again, about the discipline and about its natural incarnation, its natural form of, are you there for the love of what you're doing? And I didn't have that, and I don't know how I would have dealt with how Simone and how Gabby, how they deal with the onslaught of the social media mediums influencing your training and influencing such a delicate process, you know, that is incredibly delicate, that is not normal. That's, I think, another big reminder because there's things that are specific and specialized for a reason and they're not normal. So there's, like you're saying, there's other ways that you have to approach um these disciplines you can't just do it it's not a very run-of-the-mill type of thing and i think um finding the way to exist in that space and understanding that as a parent is very is um is um is very important to encourage the integrity of your child's career like 
long term so that they love you, they love themselves, and they love the sport. Because coming away hating all of this because it was not your dream, I don't think there's anything worse than that. And I definitely do not and did not have that. And the love that I have for it has carried me through, again, so many difficult, rough times that I think I would not have survived those times if I didn't have the, like, the, the natural like love for doing gymnastics and acrobatics. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. And it's really important to, uh, to be able to, to get that out and for people to understand and for people like you to understand it is champion, but it's, it's so fun just to, I mean, I'm, I'm having, I'm so glad that you joined us because I'm having more than fun. Cause I, like I told you, I'm such a fan and it's just, it's great because I think um, people need to hear about, they don't, you know, they see it on one level, but they don't really understand everything that goes into it, right? And 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 what you, the success that you've had after gymnastics, it's not just the gymnastics part, that it's it's been so incredible and that you stayed and you're, you're vocal. And that's why I tell people, it's a confidence. I'm like, that's what competition gives you. I'm like, I am making some warriors up in here. <laughs> these, girls, these girls are gonna be tight. <laughs> If you're gonna go out there by yourself and there are four, five, six, eight judges just judging you or you and your partner, you are gonna get confident. <laughs> you are gonna, you know, you're gonna be able to figure some stuff out. So, <laughs> and so when you get it all together, this is what you have. It's so hard that people don't get that part. But I'm like, yeah. That's why we want them to work really hard. You, you're, you and your coaches work so hard to do this beautiful performance and still to deal with the judging, but you went out there and you did it. Yeah. You, yeah. You yeah. went out there. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. There's nothing more life affirming than putting in all that work and seeing it pay off in that way. I mean, getting the results, right? Like it's tangible results in real time right away it's not just some kind of you know theory you know you see the results you work it you do it and you execute it you're like i did that that was me how i mean like i think that's so profound in terms of ownership over an agency over your life agency over your body um agency over your abilities um and and agency over being able to trust yourself i think it gives you a really great ability to trust yourself to trust your fear <laughs> that's another big one that comes up for all of us <laughs> yeah and for you too especially Especially because you're on top. <laughs> I can drop my ribbon, but then nobody's gonna drop me. <laughs> I was scared, but not that scared. <laughs> <It's> like, mm. <laughs> I was like, looking down and hoping and praying you know my, my sister getting mad at me and you know, oh <laughs> there was some times <laughs> wow yeah like that that relationship you know and, and how that worked with my sister she had to catch me she might have been mad at me we might have been having a sister's quarrel but she had to save her sister's life today it did not matter like <laughs> that was some bonding <laughs> that's so interesting yeah that part of a relationships because when you do that one when you have that kind of partnership that kind of trust that you have to have to have yeah yeah you don't just get to not do something and it's like what we know in life sometimes you just don't feel like it but guess what when you are competing and you are in situations like this you get to learn just because you don't feel like it doesn't mean that you don't get to do it you actually have to do it you do, you have to show up for your partner. You have to show up for your sister. You have to show up for your teammate. You have to show up for your coach. I know you don't feel like it. Sometimes you don't feel like doing things. We're not in the best mood. That's okay. That's okay. You're still capable. You can still focus and not feel okay. You can still do your best when you're not feeling okay. I mean, you know, going on stage later and doing my shows when I'm, you know, on a flight for 35 hours trying to get there and then going live on TV, you know, that next morning, right after I get off the plane, I definitely didn't feel like that. <laughs> I don't feel good and don't want to do it, you know? And that creates that gumption of you of like, I may not want to do this. I may not feel up to it, but I am definitely up to the task because I know that I can trust my confidence. I know that I can trust my partnership. I know that I can trust um, my, um, my, my, my internal athletic nature because of what's been instilled in me. So, Thank God. 
No, that's been that's been great. Oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. I've so enjoyed it. Is there any other messages you want to give out to anybody? You've been great though. Mm, I'm, you've got so many great messages out. We're talking to everybody. <laughs> I mean, I'm so thrilled to meet you finally. Like you are amazing. You thank thank you. <laughs> you thank you for honoring all of us thank you for keeping the legacies going thank you thank you for making me feel seen for making me feel heard thank you for this just dynamic and beautiful conversation my gosh thank oh, you so much well thank you it's 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 a labor of love it really is it's because i love gymnastics i love my peoples and <laughs> i know you know and we and it's a i think people don't understand like you said they're not a lot of us to do what we do on this level, right? Yeah. So we automatically know a lot already about our lives, right? It's like, yeah, we gotta go through that. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, we know. Yeah, I got that one. It, it, it's interesting, but I think people, um, and so glad to be able to join it. Like I told people, I just did it because my kids in my foundation didn't know, like there was no place to find it. So it's really been, it's been a blessing for them, but also for all of us. And, and this has been really special for me to be able to sit and talk with you. Oh my gosh, so excited. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you for having me. And any any message that I would leave you with is, is just for the black athletes, the black gymnasts, the black acrobats, like you matter. You are so important. Keep going. You are so incredible this is your time now and always don't ever mind people not being able to see what you can see for yourself because your potential is unbounded and i continue to be inspired by the black acrobats by the black gymnasts that i see in the community in the world at large as well and living 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 their beauty living their black beautiful acrobatic gymnastic selves <laughs> against against all odds um you know against 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 all theories that people have about what you are meant to be and what you're meant to do and there is no place for you other than the place that you set for yourself so don't ever allow anything to make you not feel that you are not the most poetic expression of acrobatics of gymnastics of athletic athleticism and just yeah just pure um goatness like what we say nowadays right <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's true that's lovely i that's a beautiful message we're gonna get that out and thank you again i i hope we can do this again because it's been it's been such a joy and i didn't get enough but um i'm so glad that you're able to share this this is going to be very special thank you so much wendy thank you again i'm so grateful for you i'm so honored uh, to know you and to meet you. And thank you again for having me.